So we left oh my God. the picket line. Yeah. We got there at 845. We left at 10. Yeah. We went to Pilates. And now I just got home and I'm eating chocolate cake. So as you should. Life is about balance. So if you hear me <laughs> smacking, it's this German chocolate cake. Because Maggie said, eat your lunch. And I wish this was my lunch. Oh, this I is love my that appetizer for lunch. lunch. I mm-hmm. love that it's the appetizer and it's cake and you deserve it. And perfect for me time too, that you're having uh, some cake for yourself. I loved seeing you this morning. We, mm. This was the funniest thing. Should I, we tell them what happened? Yeah. So yeah. Kirsten is our chief in all yeah. things. And she is our personal <laughs> strike captain. She at is. Warner Brothers. And so <laughs> yeah. she tells us where we're going to meet, what time we're getting there. So she, Dulé, myself are there and we are picketing. And Maggie sends a text and says, she's coming. Yay. Our girl is coming. So we are <laughs> in the middle of the picket line. And here comes an Uber driver, like a, a Toyota coming my way in the middle of traffic. And yeah. me and Maggie lock eyes. And I say, <laughs> It's Maggie in slow motion <laughs> while Maggie is saying what in the car, Maggie? What are you saying? Those are my friends. <laughs> <laughs> and Maggie basically jumps out of the car while whilst it's while moving. It was <laughs> that, guy, that poor guy was like, this is good. This is good. I was like, I was like, we could stop right here. I don't know if he had come to a complaint. I don't think I've seen, seen a little roll. To see you all. I've seen it. And then you ran down the street and then we all embraced. We and jumped then we up and rocked that picket line. Yes, we did. We jumped up and down and we hugged and we giggled and uh, squealed. It was some squealed. squealing. It was a lot of squealing. It was a lot of squealing because oh. if you're doing the worst thing, and this is the worst thing, we no one wants to strike. We're fighting for our rights to survive as artists. You yeah. should not have to fight. But if you do have to fight and if things are the worst, let it be the worst with family. And what? that's what we are. Family. Oh, we I are. That's family. what I consider you all. You are my family more than friends. Family. No, we are family. We are the, more the, than friends. If you called me in the middle of the night, I would answer. That's my barometer. I know. If I get a call and I see Maggie calling me, I'm going to answer because I'm going to know something great happened or something terrible has happened. <laughs> Same. Same. Or we're calling to talk about skincare. Or we're calling to talk about our skincare. <laughs> wow. Which should we tell I them? I don't know. I don't Do know. We? I, don't I know. think we should. I mean, this is Pitt. about me time. And this today about, it's about us time. It is and- about us time. <laughs> we have, we, uh, well, yeah, it's just always a lot. It's always, it's always more than we think it's going to be. We're going to go in and be like, I want to fix this little thing, or I want to do this little thing, or I want this little skincare. And then it turns out to be like there for three hours. <laughs> whole thing. Oh, we got to try this now. We got to try that now. Um, so me and Maggie go to the same doctor. Okay. Yeah. And it's a dermatologist. And so we go in feeling great about ourselves. And then for about 30 seconds, we don't <laughs> feel great. After the doctor comes in and tells us what she thinks we need, yeah. we leave the doctor's office and we text one another and we say, <laughs> yeah. this Preparing. is what she said I needed. I'm not getting all this. Yeah. And then a month later, we go back and we get it all. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much how it works. <laughs> or at least over time, I'll be like, I'm just going to do little bits. Yes. Little bits. Well, also, also, we need a full-time series, regular 16-episode order to be able to go in and just get yeah. all the things that she suggests. But yeah. over time, we're like, we're not doing this. This is crazy. Okay, no. Maggie, so this is what I got. What, what do I do? <laughs> This is what I got. So this is what was done. I love that we're the first text every time one of us leaves there. As it's soon so as I leave good. there, I'm like, okay, Maggie, I just left. Yeah. <laughs> this is what, what I got. Do? And I'll be like, tell me everything. You'll be like, I'll share the progress as we go. Oh, it's just, it's it's great. This is great for me time. Yeah. This How is great. Feeling? You look I great. still can't move my eye. In you like, so I can move everything. For those right wondering, yeah. I am not a Botox lady quite yet. Yeah, but I did get the newest version of Botox. What is it? It's got a name that I don't know this one. I don't know this one. It's It's the the newest Botox. Right, right, right. right, It's the newest one, and everything new costs more. So I'm gonna go back to Botox. But nonetheless, I got it. (laughs) You look great. I got it in between my eyebrows, guys, and And you look. And they're frozen. It's just like mine are not at the moment. 
Mine are mine are very visible at the moment, but you look great. Oh, let's Thank talk. You. We'll talk after. Let's talk. Let's, let's talk, talk after. after. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anyway, hi, Jasmine. I'm hi. so happy to have you here. Yeah, I love talking to you. <laughs> I love talking to you too. I hope. Well, first off, first off, congratulations because I know you all know this, but uh, in case there are like new listeners who maybe don't. Oh, actually. We won't mention the show because that's not what we're talking about right nope. now. Oh, so, yeah. So, but that's how, you know, we've met through Dulé and, and mm -hmm. whatever. But during our the, family, our family during the pandemic, Jasmine wrote a children's book and it's so beautiful. It's called most perfect you. And yeah, it's a uh, right there. Yeah. It's always weird to, yes. And then lo and behold, uh, cause that is such a beautiful book, but also, you know, she's such a talented writer. Book two just came out not long ago and I'm sorry. Isn't it on the New York times bestseller list? I feel yeah. like I am like one of those doctors that you have to call me doctor, but instead you have to say New York time bestselling author. Yeah, you Jasmine do. Simon. Yes. Okay. So that, get some that's how I'll introduce made. you today. New York times bestselling author Jasmine, Jasmine Simon, Simon is with us on me time. Yes. And so, yes, the book has been on the New York Times bestseller list twice. Once it debuted at number seven and last week it was at number five. What? So it's I know. moving up the charts. It's, listen, it's moving on up to the east. You side. are, you are, uh, anyway, it's so hard to, I don't know. I don't even know if pivot's the right word because I don't think it's pivoting. You're such a talented writer. Thank and you. And to have taken this leap and this risk and whatever. It's such a hard, hard, hard thing to do and brave. And and it's so beautiful what you wrote and you can feel all the love in both books. And can raise your hand if you're sick of hard things. Oh, <laughs> our hands are raised because we are, we are both very much. I'm sick of hard things, but yes. In the, oh it. girl, I'm so sick of hard things. I'm like, yeah. where's the easy things? I didn't yeah. sign up for this. Yeah. But in the midst of a hard thing. Yes. I was able to create two books that I hope like, you know, will change the trajectory of at least one little kid. So one little person can know that they are filled with nothing but good things. Uh, we know bullying is a thing and yeah. suicide rates are skyrocketing amongst adolescents and <laughs> teens. And so what can I do to do my little part? And I felt like this is what I could do to do my little part, to remind people that they are absolutely perfect and that they are made up of all the good things and not what society puts on them, not what bullies put on them, not what, you know, unsuspecting people say things all the time. And it sometimes it sticks with us. And then yeah. we, that becomes our identity. And I don't want that to happen to little kids because I know I've taken on things that people have said to me and I've used it as my identity and it didn't serve me well. We don't want little people to have to live through that the way that we had to live through that. And so it's just a little tool along the way is how I look at it, you know, and hopefully it does help someone. Hopefully someone says I am deserving. I am deserving of good things in life. I'm worthy of good things in life. I'm loved. I am important. You know, how many times have you heard I am important this week? I have zero. So I have to tell myself <laughs> I am important. Yeah. And I'm important. Well, you that's know? what I love about the books too. Like, I feel like in a way and repeat after me uh, as well. And I think I mentioned this when we talked to you and Dulé on, on the psychologist pod too, is that it is a, it is a book, you know, it was made for children. I mean, I think you made like, it was a children's book, but, mm -hmm. but it it's the affirmations it's for anyone who yes. needs it. It's not like, that's what's so beautiful about it. It's for everyone. Cause we all need it. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. like no one is right. Bulletproof right. to like right. self-loathing, you know, it's just like we are hardwired that way for some reason. And we have to re-hardwire our brains. And this is yeah. saying affirmations out loud and in first person is a way to scientifically proven way to rewire the way your brain works. And so, right. and you're right. It is, I wrote it for little children, but it has a duality to them. Both of them do. Yeah. Because even, you know, repeat after me, somebody has to read it to the child because, yeah. you know, believe it or not, two-year-olds don't know how to read yet. Four-year-olds don't know how to read yet. And so you're right. reading this and you have to say them out loud and in first person. 
I, as child. you were seeing that, I realized that like the oh, reader yeah. is saying the affirmation. Absolutely. I tricked them. Yeah. I tricked everybody. <laughs> you you know? tricked everybody. It's like a good trick though. It's not like what the producers are doing to us. This is like a good trick. This right. benefits everyone because yeah. you get to learn to like appreciate yourself more. And it's yeah. a hard thing to do. You know, it's just very challenging. So, well, this is a good my book. segue. Oh my God. New York Times bestselling author, Jasmine <laughs> Simon. That's a good segue into uh, talking about me time and talking about how you do take care. We do take care of ourselves or, you know, anyway, I, I, I feel like I would love to start with you around this. So I've been thinking a lot just in talking to people that there is usually a moment. There's usually a thing. We have many, obviously, like throughout our lives, but there's usually like something that happens before a period of say, where you go into like this kind of hardcore self care, discovery, exploration, taking a look, change, whatever it might Mm -hmm. be. And I've just been calling them like moments of impact. And, and I'm curious just to like start there, but I also like, I have so many questions about you and how you're so, I mean, you have Kennedy's in college. She Kennedy's is. in college. She'll I mean, be 19 next month. month. <laughs> She's, she is in a statistics and coding class as we speak. Oh so that God. means that she is officially a sophomore in college. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. I know. Meg, can you believe that? I know. Yeah. She is a sophomore in college. She will be 19 on August 27th, which the math doesn't seem to work for me. I keep trying to figure it out because I'm not old enough <laughs> yeah. to have a 19 year old, but somehow, some way I have one. <laughs> but you, and you also have Levi. And I also have a four year old, who is which is wild. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm curious. So I want to go back. We'll go back to the moment of impact to whatever sort of comes to you as like as a period of time that after this moment of impact, what moment of impact, something that changed your life where you knew you would not be the same after, but also how you find your me time now um, being a New York Times bestselling author, mother of two, gorgeous, stunning, loving, supportive wife, all the things that you are. Um, Anyway, so we'll start however you want to start. Yeah. You know, I will say because it's you, I can just tell you the truth. We're going to act like thousands of people aren't listening. It's just me and you, right? How we do it. I would say the biggest moment of impact in my life is when I found out that I was pregnant with Kennedy. That was the moment in my life that I made a conscious decision to do things differently. And I was 22. I had just graduated from college one month prior which wow. means that I was pregnant when I walked across the graduation stage because by the time I found out, I was about six or seven weeks pregnant, which by the way is why six week abortion bans are really, really hard because you oh. don't know, right? I would have never, once I had found out that I was pregnant with her, I was like, this is where my life is going. But yeah. I did not have parents growing up. My grandmother raised me. Um, my mom's mom and then my dad's mom stepped in. They were like a divorced couple, I like to say. I was with one during the school year and one during the summer, and they rallied to like support me and take care of me. But no matter what, I didn't have parents. And it was always a void because your parents just aren't your parents. They're your parents' parents. And so they are mm-hmm. loving your parents even when you can't stand your parents. And it's a really weird relationship. Well, that's complicated. It is so complicated. It causes mm-hmm. what I like to say big T trauma. There's little T trauma and then there's big T. That would be a capital T trauma because then who is your person, right? And And so, yeah. So when I found out that I was pregnant with Kennedy, I was graduating. I had graduated from UNLV and I was working at the California Pizza Kitchen to just being a really solid mother to Kennedy. And that was the most impactful and the best decision that I ever made. And I would like to say to all the mothers out there, it is the hardest job in the entire galaxy. Okay. What's bigger than the the entire everything. It's the hardest thing, everything. It is the, the literal hardest thing. But sometimes even in the hardest things, you still get what your heart desires. And Mm -hmm. I got a best friend that taught me everything about love because I don't feel that I knew what love was before that, like pure love. And she taught me what pure love is because on my worst day, she loved me. And on my best day, she loved me. And because she loved me in a way that was so powerful, it was like a symbiotic relationship. 
And like, I gave her love and she gave me love and I got to reparent myself in parenting her. And that's why it was so impactful, right? It was like, I got to relive my life through her eyes and her experiences. And even though parenting is so hard and I was a young mom and it was not easy for a long time, it's still not easy, honestly, but then I still got to live out my dreams. And it ha- it, it so happened that she got to live them right beside me. And it mm-hmm. was way better than I could have ever dreamed it or wished it because I still got to move to LA. But at the time I had a six-year-old little buddy with me and me and Kennedy moved to LA into an apartment that we had never seen. <laughs> so her mother could try to become an actress and look at me now. I am on the picket line. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Look at me. I am Fighting, indeed but an fight. actress. Yes, but yes. we're in solidarity. This we're all in this together. Oh, it's for like, sure. Dang. There's yeah. nowhere else I'd rather be. I say that to say that I shall not talk about any of the projects that right. I worked on. You can we're just Google that. that. But the point is, is that I, you know, I had said she deserves a mother. She deserves health insurance. She deserves stability. And I just quit acting completely. And I was like, this is what she deserves. And at some point she was probably five years old. I was like, I am miserable. And now I have to figure out, you know, how to be happy and be a really great mother. And I realized that I could probably do both. And I moved (laughs) to LA. And and also Kennedy would want that for you. She would want that for me. And she is my biggest cheerleader, my longest running cheerleader. And I moved to LA and I did pharmaceutical sales because luckily I had graduated from college and I did pharmaceutical sales. So I was able to support us. I went back to school and got my MBA because I was really dedicated to not being an actress and just being her mother. And, and then look, it all, it all worked out, you know, it all, it really did all work out better. But that moment, the moment that I found out I was pregnant, I said, okay, well, this, this is going to change the the path of my life. And it did for the very best way. And it sounds like in the process, like you all healed. I mean, you obviously, I got to say, like in terms of parent child relationships, I've seen you and Kennedy is probably one of the most magical, special. I mean, I've been sitting next to you times where I'll look over and what you're texting each other and the way she, your openness with each other, your care with each other. It's just Mm -hmm. like, it's one of the most beautiful things to witness. And you all went through all of this together and in a Mm -hmm. way like healed each other. Myself. Yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, and it's interesting in the sort of, we'll just say course change that that took for you. You also found your way back with her. It's just incredible, Jasper. Like you're incredible. Yeah, thank but you. It's you. I mean, honestly, it's it, it's it's even just talking about the book at the beginning of this. It's like you're a whole. I, I don't. You're something. I'm else. a little tornado. Like you're a little peaceful like one. A piece. Like a little. Woo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a good tornado. I don't know if those exist, but like I will yeah. say that like once I put my mind to something, mm-hmm. that it's very hard to like dissuade me from the decision that I made, yeah. and. And you're right. Kennedy and I do have, mm-hmm. I would say, listen, I'm in the process of writing a nonfiction book. It came to me to write this nonfiction book. And I will listen, I'm telling you that I've never told anybody outside of this house and my, you know, agent. And um, it's just me. There's not a thousand people. There's not thousands of people listening know, and know. this doesn't live on for perpetuity in the, in the whole, the universe whole. But I have decided to write a nonfiction book called It Doesn't Have to Be Hard. And it's like a manual for mothers raising teenage daughters, right? Mothers raising daughters. Because the thing that you hear, and I heard it so much, is like, oh, wait till till she's a teen. Right. Let's wait. Let's wait. And I set up certain guardrails so Kennedy and I would never have a season of cloudiness. We have had days of cloudiness. We have had, you know, flash floods every now and then, but we have not had a season of cloudiness. We have always kept the lines of communication open. And I feel like it was a conscious effort on my part to, again, and I say this all the time, be the mother that I needed not yeah. the mother that I had. And if I could put myself in her shoes at 14, what did I need when I was 14? 
mainly understanding somebody to talk to, somebody to give me unconditional love, somebody to give me some interdependence, not independence. She didn't deserve ind- independence at 14. She needed yeah. interdependence. And I think all those things led us to a really strong, beautiful relationship. And I used to tell her growing up, I am not your friend. Like, I can't be your friend. What you oh, need I is a mother. Oh, okay. God, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, I am not your friend. Yeah. That would do you a disservice if I was your friend. But now at 18, almost 19, she is my best friend. Yeah. She's my best friend. She knows me better than Dulé knows me. She knows me because she has been with me through every stage of my life. Right. We can sit on the couch and have a conversation by not saying anything. She is the person that we just sit in silence. And then we're like, you want to order food? Yeah, yeah. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> you know, it's just really I, beautiful. And I love her so much. And I hope that relationship so on other mothers, like that is what I hope for other mothers is that someone can tell them it doesn't have to be hard. Instead of being like, oh, she's a teenager. Oh my God, it's kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't. I want to tell all the mothers listening, it doesn't have to be hard. Maybe some hard days, but it doesn't have to be hard. Right. And we can get through it and we can be friends with our daughters when they're adults. And we don't have to have tumultuous, terrible relationships or hide or lie. You know, we can just we can coexist and we can help them along their way and we give them space and freedom. And I feel like I've given her that. And the more freedom that I give her and I'm not just saying this, the more freedom that I give her, the closer she gets to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you let her be her own person, too. I do. I've I seen do. it. And also, I hope you know, you're going to literally be, you know, remember when you were like, if I see Maggie calling, I'm going to pick up. Well, when I have kids, guess what? You better <laughs> call me. <laughs> Listen, Auntie Jazz will be there every step of the way. And hopefully the book is out. And I'll be like, and also oh, here, and you here's can't. your, here's in yeah. the middle of the night, like 2 a.m. Then you got yeah. something to read because I'm going to be sleeping. <laughs> yeah. I'll I'll be sleep. sleep. Yeah. Just read it until 6 a.m. And then I'll call you back. But um, yeah. So. One of my favorite moments was last year. We were sitting at, oh my gosh, what was that? Where were we? It was at the grant. I want to say we were doing something. And I remember, was it two years ago? Oh my God. With the pandemic, I have no idea. I remember seeing your phone and you were like, Kennedy's at a party right now in the hills. Mm -hmm. And you wrote, turn up. Yeah. (laughs) You better. (laughs) I was like, and you were like, okay, now nah. she like was like, mom, we got here safe or like whatever. Mm-hmm. She was like, mm-hmm. you. and you wrote turn up. And I was like, oh my God, greatest, like what a, what a mom, like I, even just to be like, okay, now nah, go, go have fun. Like go be, go. Turn, she knew turn before. And I'm always like, oh my God, you're in college. That's so fun. Have fun for me. Mm-hmm. Like have fun for me now. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we had a simple understanding when it came to parties that she yeah. couldn't do drugs. Like, yeah. I don't care. Like, that's hard. No, my parents are drug addicts. Hard stop because that's a, it's a dead end street. You say, <laughs> okay. It's like a dead end. It's not even I'm like, saying. there's nothing on the other side of that. That's yep. positive. Yep. And two, if whoever you're with is drinking, just call me and I'll come pick you up. I will not ask you a single question. I will not. I, I just call me. I don't care what time it is. Just call me. Say, yeah. mom, I, I'm going to drop you pin. This is where I'm at. And so, so I knew that I had already laid the foundation that, because at the time I don't believe she had a car yet, just call me and I'll come pick you up. Now, when she is in college now and even here at home, I said, look, I don't want you to drink. I, you know, I'm, I'm not your friend. I'm not going to be like, oh my God. <laughs> but if you drink, just get in an Uber. Right. At college, I say, never drive your car to a party. Never. Right. Me right. and your dad pay for your right. Ubers. Yeah. yeah. Just take an Uber. And she does. Every time she goes out, we get that little ding ding and we know where she's at. She's Ubered there. Isn't that so much healthier than like yeah. tell, the other way? Yeah. Like making kids feel bad for being kids or making well, like mistakes. Helicoptering, or- helicoptering. Yeah. Like where it's like they don't get to be their own. I Look, I can't speak to any, you know, I can obviously not speak to having kids, but, but I, I can imagine as being, being a kid or being a child of something mm-hmm. like that, that would be very hard. The constant kind of covering. Hovering is the right word, I guess. Yeah, I almost, I was going to say spying, but that's not. Spying? Kids spying. It's not legally spying because they're children, right? But then 
and then we're going to get to my me time. And yeah, we got time. But, <laughs> but I, again, again, I was not her friend. And I would randomly like, give me your phone. Let's see what's in here. Yeah. And I would straight go through her phone. I would not hide. I would not go around the corner. Yeah. I would not sneak her phone and look. I'd be like, give me your phone. The I pay the phone bill. Yeah. I am your mom. I have yeah. to keep you safe. Yeah. Now, if you have anything in here and you're okay with me seeing it, great. Now, if you don't want me to see it and you don't know, Jen, don't do it. Yeah. You know, That's just don't yeah. do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Do not yeah. send a boy like, nude pictures. Yeah. 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 I used to say that too. I used to like, hey, listen, that is going to live in the cloud for the Forever. rest of your life. That's good, Jasmine. Forever. So good. My mom was so good about the things, the forever things, like instilling that fear in me of whatever it might be that could live forever. Like that is, it's true though. Yes, it's true. true. Yeah, yeah. Like it is so true. And yeah. Look, you don't know what your life holds. Right. I, I like to tell kids the job that you're going to have isn't created yet. You don't know what you're right. going to do. It's right. not yet created, right. but that job might care that you sent some nudes to somebody when you're 15 <laughs> years old. Don't yeah. do it. Yeah. Your political career is over before it starts. If you do that, you know, yeah. and so, you know, but also I'd let her have a boyfriend. Yeah. Everything is balanced. You know, yeah. everything is balanced. I remember that. And again, so we'll get she to has the one. same one. <laughs> I know. He's and I I remember you saying at one point, I think we were on site three or something, which anything we can always whatever. Kennedy, but Kennedy allows me to just tell her business. Well, yeah. If she asked you, I think you all were having conversations about like birth control. Not oh, because yes. she was like, but you she came to you basically like, I just can we start this conversation? It was like yes. you were like, sit down, let's go. So and, over her life, yeah. I would say the same thing over and over. You got to come to me. There will yeah. be no judgment. I will never judge you. Like yeah. I didn't want to raise her in a, you have to wait till marriage. That's unrealistic. And she might not have ever gotten married. And I didn't want her to believe that she needed to be married to have sex. That's not my belief. Right. And so since it's not my belief, I don't want that to be your, I'm not going to trick you. I'm going to be like, you got to wait, even though I didn't, but I want you to. Because yeah. you were trying to instill some type of fear. And so we had sex talks early and in depth and a, a lot of times. And I said, if and when you're ready to have sex, it's a very mature thing. So when you're ready to do it, you have to be mature enough to come tell me. Yeah. That's the deal. You got to say, this is a mature thing. And I am mature enough to look you in your face. And say, I think I'm ready. And then when you do that, we will put you on birth control. And I will not judge you. And I won't ask you a single question beyond that. I'm not going to be like, did you have sex yet? Yeah. You know, <laughs> like it's not going to happen. And, and to this day, I've never asked her. So did you have sex? Right. I can make assumptions because she's 19. And last night she's, she stayed at her boyfriend's house. So yeah, yeah. I, you're like, you know, like, but I know that she's safe and you're right. She came to me and she told me and I died. I freaking yeah. Yeah. died. I remember telling you, I died. I like, zuh, it was right before and yet, we did. It's like three, right? And and you, and yet you. I died you on the inside, not the outside. Exactly. You didn't, you, you stayed together for her. But I remember us having this conversation. You were like, yeah. <gasps> yeah. And she came to me like a very mature 16 year old, 17 year old, 16. And they had been together for over a year and they were starting to talk about it. And I said, Hey, let's, let's, here you go. Here's all the things that I've already taught you everything. I've showed you every STD picture, you mm -hmm. know, about teen pregnancy, you know, about everything that could possibly happen because there are worse things than babies. And we've talked about all of those. And then when she came to me again, I died on the inside and on the outside, I kept a straight face. And I was so impressed by her because she did something that I, I never got an opportunity to do, nor did, did I feel safe enough to do it. But she did feel safe enough to do it. And she did. And now because you're her mama and you made I am her partner. mama. Yeah. And three and a half years later, those two people are still together and really in love. It's very also beautiful. Like it's a like real weird, solid, healthy, so mature weird. relationship. Oh, my and God. <laughs> no, they're two very mature, intelligent, highly intelligent people yeah. who are just like not codependent. I know nothing about that. <laughs> Hey! Hey! hey. Oh, high five! <laughs> nice to see you here. Okay, Pinsy Jasmine. Now. Me time. Me time for Jasmine. Time. What does that mean? What does it look like? And how do you? Well, first off, how would you kind of define that for you? Um, in that, 
Like, when do you, what do you do to, to come back to yourself or, and how do you know when you've kind of reached a point where you're like, so because yeah, it's just you and I here. Yeah. So I can tell you the truth. I am actually, this is why I was most excited to do this without, without Julie first Mm -hmm. is because I can tell you, I am the worst at me time because I have been a mother for 19 years and a lot of time in the beginning I could not afford to like separate myself from Kennedy, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Like I didn't, I couldn't, I had no one. I don't have parents. Remember said that. So Kennedy and I have been an island and we've been by ourselves. and we were by ourselves in Chicago. We were by ourselves in LA. We moved here when she was six years old. And so I didn't have anybody be like, all right, mom, I'm going to drop her off and I'm going to go for a run or a hike. Right. And so I am actually really, really bad about taking time for myself. And I'm bad at it because I've never done it. And like Dulé is like, I'm going to get a massage. I'll be back in two hours. This buddy, <laughs> this buddy books two hour massages without a care in the world. Yeah. And I'm like two hours. And I'm like, oh my God, that's what it looks like. That's mm-hmm. what it looks like. But I don't know what I like yet. And so I can say to you, Maggie only, that I'm figuring out what it is later in life that I even like, like, what do I like to do? Do I like, I figured out, you know, in the last year that I like to write TV shows. I like to write. Mm -hmm. And so I, in my me time, what I do is I come to my office and now I write and I feel like it's me time and work because it's work because, you know, I'm a writer and I write and hopefully I'll sell these these hoes when the strike is over. Oh, but yeah. also it lets me take myself out of being a parent and a wife. And I just get to like, Create. right. I, I told Dulé maybe two days ago, I'm going to send myself on a writer retreat. I'm going to go to Ojai for two days and I'm just going to go by a pool and I'm going to have my laptop. And I feel like that will be the first step in me figuring out what me time looks like for me. I you know, I think you. we don't, We don't really talk about like the type of mom that doesn't have support, right? Like, right. That was my mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't a single mom doesn't have time or money to prioritize herself. Right. That just is not how it works for most people. Now, if I would have, you know, had a lot of money growing up, then it would be different. I would know how to do it, but I didn't have money growing up. And then I had a child when I was a child still. And then I raised that child and dedicated every, all my blood, sweat and tears into that child. Mm -hmm. And once she got to a certain age, I fell in love. And she was 10 years old when Dulé and I got together. And so it was a little easier for Dulé and I to like sneak away sometimes because she was 10 and she would want to go to her friend's house anyway. I'm like, Thank you. Um, And then, you know, Julie adopted her. We got married and then we had another baby. And I, in that time, forgot to figure out what I liked. And so right when Kennedy was old enough for me to really figure out what I liked, I had a a newborn in my arms. And so I was like, oh, it was psych three. Everything revolves around psych three in this conversation. We were in Vancouver. and Remember, we were on lockdown for two weeks. And Within the first week, I remember like bursting into tears and Dulé was like, what's wrong? Like, baby, what's wrong? And I was like, I will never be free. He was like, what do you mean? And I said, like, I have given someone like 16 years, 17, she was 16 or 17 years of my life. And now I have to give 18 more years 18 plus years to someone else. And there was no time in between that I got to know myself, that I got to do what I wanted to do and be free. And that is a really tough place to be in. And so for all the moms listening, it's not so easy to get free time. I'm so glad that I get to come on here and be like free time. And me time is like a novel thing. And it's it's what people can afford to do. It's not That's what everybody true. gets to do. Right. And so I can now take time, thank God, because I'm not in the same financial place and I have a partner. So I can get away, but then yeah. I still don't because I don't know how. Right. It's like a really weird thing. Like it's when not I'm 
I mean, I'm happy you're talking about this too. It's not, that's not a weird thing. That's a mostly normal thing. Honestly, yeah. and I don't, I don't even want to use the word normal because like normal, whatever that it's, is, but I, I, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. A common, it's a common, common thing. thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that's why, you know, motherhood is, I remember I said, it's the hardest thing in the planet because right. I, I feel like I'm more busy, Maggie, when I'm off of work that I'm like, just send me back to work because at work, at least I'm in my trailer by myself. Yeah. 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 Like, I'm, I'm in my trailer by myself. I'm like, I'm in hair and makeup. I'm sleep. I'm like, this is vacation when I, when I go to work. Do you, ever, like, mother- zone out? Do you ever get on your phone and like zone out to like YouTube or any, or like mm-hmm. any sort of videos on anything that like, even just to give you a, a minute, or are you just like sitting in your trailer? Like <sighs> I am generally, you know, Instagram is like a, a, a time suck. So I would like go on Instagram. I really like audio audible. So I would like oh, yeah. put a book in and like inadvertently fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, so you're re- tired. You're so exhausted. Yes. And you relax. It's a moment you get to actually like your body can like, you can, you can. Yeah. Share. yeah. And so I hope that the next time you better invite me back that I can be like, oh my God, this is what I've me. learned I to do. Like, this is what I learned about myself. And I, there's like an art class that I'm going to take. And I'm like, let me see if I like art because I am, I am the lady that goes to art shows. And I'm like, I can do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Never picked up a paintbrush. Okay. Okay. But here's what I'll tell you, what I know mm-hmm. about you. I know when Jasmine's like, I'm going to do something, she's going to do it. And it's going to be so good. Like, <laughs> don't even, don't even, I swear. You're going to be like, I took one art class and I'm doing an art. Sh- I have an art gallery show next week. That's what oh, in, in a year, everybody, show. we're going to be, no, <laughs> 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 but I'm telling we're, you, like, we're a beret to my show. <laughs> I got one. I got one ready. I got one ready. <laughs> no, it's so, I'm just, I love you sharing this actually, as you're sharing, I'm kind of like, even just thinking about my mom, I'm thinking about processing. I'm thinking about the affording of that kind of time and space and, Mm -hmm. you know, knowing that about, uh, discovering that about yourself. It's weird. I'm, you know, I'm like completely alone right now. Mm -hmm. Like, so it's over Maggie. I hear these room is empty. Just move in. (laughs) Please move in. (laughs) I'm in the, I'm in the process of like, the opposite. It's so funny doing this podcast because part of it is a little bit about like me getting to know myself at my age and also 32, (laughs) 32. And the things I would have thought I might have done at by now that are, Mm -hmm. I'm still waiting to see or whatever. And in that process, I'm actually right now a little bit like, Oh, I need to be careful of my almost like the opposite, like the isolation time Mm -hmm. and that I'm having. And it's so interesting just like hearing, yeah, it is a, my mom could never afford to take an hour Mm-hmm. Like it just didn't, I wanted it for her so badly. Like mm-hmm. I remember thinking that or whatever, but I also, anyway, I'm just listening to you talk. It's very thoughtful. It's actually enlightening or just around this whole, this whole topic. And I'm mm-hmm. excited for you to just to figure it out. <laughs> well, to, yeah. And that you're giving that, I guess, to yourself because it's interesting, like the writer part of you, you were saying how like that feels like your me time and that you're like creating Mm-hmm. And that you're going to sort of go on a creative retreat mm-hmm. for yourself. Just for myself. Yeah. Just so I can like, you know, me time in my dream. This is what me time looks like. I get yeah. to wake up on my own. Like there's not an alarm clock. There's not someone like, mama, mm-hmm. even though I love that. I would just, in my me time, we're just waking up on our own. Me, yeah. just me and me, big Jasmine and little Jasmine waking up, eating what, going somewhere quietly eating whatever it is that I want to eat and then just going to sit by a pool, maybe get in, maybe not, maybe put my feet in, maybe not. And just figuring out how I want to spend my day. But it definitely starts with just waking up when I want to wake up. I don't want to wake up at 630 guys. It really sucks. (laughs) (laughs) Every day. I mean, I, he wakes up at seven. So he does, he does give me that, you know, and look, someone's going to be like, She's complaining about mother. No, I'm not. I love oh, my Jasmine, kids. You're the most loving. Yeah, no. If somebody says but, that, no, 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 no. I mean, but people, they don't know me. So hi, guys. Get to know me. I'm great. Just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, it sounds like I'm just like, oh. But I have also come to a place that I don't want to lie to people. And I just want to tell people exactly how it is. Like if someone asked me about marriage, I would tell them the truth. 
I would tell them it is so much work. Oh my God. You can have the best husband, which I do, and he will still get on your damn nerves and it will <laughs> still be so much work. No one says that. Right. People are like, um, marriage is great. Eh. Marriage is great some days and some days it's work. And yeah. that's the same with parenthood. And which is why me time is so important. And I just think as women, we do need to learn how to carve out time for ourselves. And I don't want to be Levi's mom some days. I just want to be mm. Jasmine who has a son named Levi. Right. Now, I do want to say I in doing research for my nonfiction book, Maggie, isolation is not good. It no, is not good. I know. It's and I do it by default. Okay, can I tell a story, Jasmine? Yes. Please tell me a story. I want to tell you this because I don't know if you know this, and I'm going to try to get through it without crying. Okay. Well, we're we cry crying. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I don't know if you know this. I think you do know this. But mm-hmm. after my divorce, I was in a pretty bad, bad place, and I had moved into a house that I was like, I was very comfortable there, but it was also kind of tucked away, and that was kind of on purpose, and I was in a space of, well, my therapist got to a point where she was like, all right, every third day you need to accept an invitation, Mm. uh, because out of your Mm -hmm. house. And I didn't really, I couldn't, I remember Dulé saying something to me at one point, just that it was almost hard to talk about marriage or divorce with somebody who hadn't been married or divorced Mm -hmm. or yeah. And so Mm -hmm. I was very careful. I also didn't share a lot about, I still don't share a lot about it. It's still very close, but anyway, to make all of that short, I wasn't doing very well with my accept an invitation out every third day. (laughs) And I remember you and Dulé texting me and you were like, we're coming to you. Mm -hmm. We're getting you out of your house. Mm -hmm. I was like, I can't even think of where I'd want to go. Maybe down the street. You're like, great. That's where we'll go. And we sat at La Puba. I cannot tell the story. And (laughs) I'm telling you to this day, I don't know if you all like talk about a moment of impact. Mm-hmm. It changed that change. You all pulling me mm-hmm. out of my house and taking me down to La Poubelle and having a drink and talking mm-hmm. things through literally got me. It broke the the spell that I was in. And you all were the safest, most, it was for as long as I live, you were angels to me. You remain mm-hmm. angels to me. And, and I, we love you so much. I and now you. I'm tearing up too. <laughs> but yeah, it, it changed my, it literally changed my whole path forward path forward. It did. It and it's a beautiful path forward. And I will never forget that either Yeah, because that was the beginning of our real relationship, me and you like yeah, real friendship, right? Like, and, like, um, because Dulé like had loved you. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. yeah. Yeah. And Dulé had known you for so long and he already loved you. And I just remember like, Oh my God, I love her too. And I see why you love her. And you were vulnerable and you were like, this is where I'm at and this is my hurts and these are my pains. And it was a good cleansing moment and it was a way forward. And listen, I'm so glad that we did that. Do you know, like you never, and this is to all the people listening, you never know what people are going through. Like you never know like the state of someone and it's always good to reach out. And it's funny because Dulé and I are, I just remember leading up to it. And we were like, we got to see Maggie. We got to see Maggie. And we were like, no, today, like we're going like immediate. You like literally, I remember it. You, I think it was that night, like tonight. I was like, I don't have plans. I don't have plans for months. (laughs) I I don't. And I haven't. (laughs) I haven't. Yeah. And then you guys were like, that's happening. We're doing it. And I was like, okay. Okay. That feels safe. If I felt you, it was safe. And I, you all are anyway. For the and people that don't know, we are the <laughs> most regular people. And I you, think you're real and you're honest. And you're also, you have a whole life, Jasmine, your whole story, your whole life. You write that book. Someone told me last night, one of my dearest friends, India, who I love dearly. We went yeah, to play. Yeah, yeah, you got to meet on the line. On she the said, line. this must be your, she was like, about parenting. She was like, you've just done it right. This must be your 499th life. Like you must have just kept doing it and it kept doing it and it kept doing it and kept doing it. And that's how, and, and when she said that, I, I thought it, it, that must be true. And I feel that way about Dulé as well. Like we must have just kept doing it and kept doing it and said, I just need one more chance. Make it harder this time and let me see if I can be a light to somebody. Let yeah. me see if I can make sure that this child, generational curses are broken. Let me be a friend. And I think 
that in some ways we really on our 499th time <laughs> of this human experience that we are we are finally like getting it right. And I think a big part of that is extending ourselves in friendship and genuinely yeah. loving people. And in in that moment, like I said, I got to fall in love with you. So then there's a moment of impact for me too. Yeah. And here's the thing about you and I, we love one another. We are so busy doing, I don't know what, but every I, single time I see you, it's like, I saw you yesterday. I know. Every so. single time I see yeah. you, it's like, yeah. there's nothing but like a bounty of love, like soft, yeah. cuddly, marshmallowy love in between yeah. us. It is. And that's how I feel. Like, that's how I feel. And I feel like in that moment of impact for you, I got to be impacted and be like, oh, I can have a friend here. This can also be a safe place for me. This is also love can mm. live here. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, people impact you and then in turn, you're getting impacted. And I think <laughs> yeah, if it's in yeah. positivity and love yeah. and light, then yes then everybody can win. Um, uh, yeah. And I was just thinking, as you were saying, like we, we, in sharing sort of your being on your 499th life, also these books and the way you're reaching the world, like you're talking mm -hmm. about changing, but that's how you change the world. You that's change it. the world <laughs> one, one, at a time. one at a time. Like that's it. It's not some, and because the intention behind it is also just that it's so pure. It's mm -hmm. not for any other reach of anything. It's like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That is it, Maggie Lawson. Yeah. That is it. I, when I wrote the books, no one asked me to. And I love to say that like people are like, how can I write a book? I'm like, I'll help you, but you have to know what you want to write. It can't right. be me writing it. Cause then right. I'll write the book. Like, <laughs> right. It has to be a pure, pure intention. If you want positive positivity, if yeah. that is what, if you want to come from a place where I just want to shed light and I just want to be light. And then it, then you don't write it for anybody else. You wrote it, write it for you. I wrote these books mm -hmm. for me, for me and my heart to say, how can I move one stone forward? How right. can I make one little ripple in the ocean that could have a big impact as it goes out? And this was my way of doing that. Yeah. And so, you know, and that's a lesson Beautiful. for people. Like sometimes yeah. it starts like a little tiny touch in the water and that's in your heart. And then it can ripple out and it can, you know, these books are brand new books last forever. Right. Um, I will say on the New York time bestseller list, <laughs> uh, dragons love tacos. Okay. People are like, why are she telling me this? There's a message in this dragon loves tacos is the number one children's book. Okay. And, and you think, okay, dragon love tacos. The book was published in 2012. Okay. And it's a New York Times bestseller today because some things take time. The impact oh. of a little things sometimes takes time. The things that we plant today take time to grow. Yeah. You can be impactful today. You could say something to me today that in five years, I'm like, she said that and she said it for me in this moment. And so that's why we should always lead with our chest open, with our heart yeah. out, because we can impact people every single day. And down the road, it can bring bare fruit. I mean, Dragon Love Talk 2012. And so I'm like, these books are tiny. Yeah. I have time to continue to touch the world. I have time, generations and generations for the next 20 years can be like, I am loved. I am worthy. I am special. I don't need to bully. Bully is a fit, but people bully for attention. That's yeah. really the main thing. They want like good or negative attention. Doesn't matter. They want attention. If yeah. they know I don't need attention from the outside because on the inside, I am gifted. I am worthy. I am brave. I am strong. Mm. Then they don't need to get attention from outside. They right. know that everything that they need is already inside of them. Maybe bullying stuff at least goes down at least in one school, at least with one child. And yeah. that's really, you know, that's the impact that, that, I'm these trying to do. Big. I know you're like, they're these little, but, but they're big. They're f the, the love. It's a big love. There's like, they're big, big books you feel it. Like you can feel it. But and this is not attention. about the books. This is no. nowhere. I just want people to know it's not about the books. It's about like love and impact yeah. and like, and me time, right. In this, yeah. in loving other people, I yeah. realized I need to do more reparenting with myself and okay, you're, I am loved. And now what does that mean? Yeah. For me. 
It means that I do get to sleep till 10 o'clock one day. It means that my mom, it does. Yeah. It means that I can't have mom guilt. I have to be like, Levi will survive if I'm not here on a Saturday Mm -hmm. morning. Mm -hmm. You know, Dulé can handle it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He can. Mm Kind of. No, I'm just joking. He can. He's the best dad in the world. <laughs> but, Jasmine, but yes, that's just it. You know, I'm going to love myself, guys, and I'm going to do something that I like. I'm going to figure it out. OK, well, with that, I want to say, OK, one of my favorite things on this, well, one of my favorite things to do is talk about other people's favorite things. OK, so I want to know Jasmine's I, I say you can name as many as you want, but I want at least three things, your favorite things. And it doesn't have to be like, of to all time mm-hmm. or whatever, just three things right now. You're like, I can't live without these three things. These are my favorite things. Oh, physical things. Yeah. Or okay. whatever. I'm going to let everybody say whatever. Cause sometimes I'm like, Listen, yeah, you're like, yeah, I cannot yeah. live without cooking. Now I know that is so ah. abstract, but no, cooking is my love language. You remember I had you over best That's- meal ever, by the way. Oh my God. Walked into that house. It smelled so good. Jasmine, you, you are amazing. such an amazing, you're such a talented cook. Thank you. you are, Cookbook you one day. I don't know, but that's Cookbook, my love yeah. language. So I can't, I cannot go without, you know, cooking. I cannot go without this one moisturizer called Force to V. Okay. <laughs> tell me, this is what I want to hear. Okay. By Luzerne. It's oh, an Luzerne. oxygen, it's an oxygenated moisturizer because I am dry AF and it makes your face feel like you've stepped into like do. So I cannot live. <laughs> You've told me this. So I'm using that Sente from Dr. Fitzgerald, but I'm like, I'm not, I'm not sold, but Luzerne is what I used to use. And it's Force non-toxic to also. Uh, it's the, non-toxic that, that from the Alps. Alps. Yeah. From the Alps. From it's the Alps. Straight from the snow of the Alps. <laughs> <laughs> it's from the Alps. And this is the worst thing. It's the yeah. best and the worst thing, but my phone. Now, listen, I'm no. on my phone so much. And and so that's one thing that I, I truly cannot live without. And it's a, Dulé is traveling and Kennedy is in college and Levi, it is a source of us to all stay connected. Mm-hmm. And, and I, you know, I love my phone and I love to be able to FaceTime Kennedy at random times of the day and look around at college. Yeah. And so I'm a no, little I embarrassed, but not really. Don't be embarrassed. That's one of my favorites because I feel like people are like, we can't talk about that. And it's like Tim, Tim and I talked about this when he did his episode because his hit all of his me time at this point in his life, you know, post having a stroke in, in 2017 is connection. Mm-hmm. So for him, it's like all about it, it. The phone was like, uh, his main source of connection. It's a source of connection. Yes. Can um, you believe we lived through that? Yeah. No, that's another thing. Like family. Family. I just can't believe like we all sat and cried together when yeah. Tim had that stroke. It was just yeah. horrific. And look at him now. Call. I was the call and then I, I called yeah. you all. I think it was it, a very terrible. It was a ter- terrible phone tree. It, it was, was like a tear because that's not the phone oh. tree you want Mm-mm. to happen. But we got to live through that. And that was also impactful. Right. Yeah, that experience. But, been you know. We have been through too many things. It's We've too hard. Through. Remember I said that? <laughs> it's like, hard. But it's without the hard, you also don't. Joy is almost that much. When we get to celebrate, Tim, now. When we get to mm-hmm. celebrate where we get, where we are with the love and all that, too. It's almost like, I'm not saying I want the heart. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like, oh, yeah, we got to have that heart. No, we don't. We it don't. makes us appreciate everything but else. It, but it, it does really make you appreciate other things. So I'm not mad at the phone, Jasmine, being a, a favorite thing at all. At all. Not. I, I love throw in. cooking is me time. That's one of my me times is like, also like I've just discovered this and I like, I'm loving it, but it's one of my like creative. It helps me connect with something almost like even when yes. I'm alone. Yeah. yeah. I cut the music on. So yes, that is something. I think sometimes I look at it as a chore because if I don't cook, then we don't eat. <laughs> so it is. Okay. It's like, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I really do like, I'm going to send you and Kirsten a text and we, I'm going to have you guys over. Uh, because that was like such a beautiful like, dinner. <laughs> yeah. But, but like, I like doing it for other people. I'm like, okay, what can I make now? Okay. And then I put it together and that is me time in a very loving way to give to somebody else. But right. I could, I love cooking. I just really do. Yeah. I'm going to call Selena Gomez. 
A couple things I want to say. Where <laughs> call Selena Gomez? Where is your cooking show? One, two. Where is your podcast? Because I'm literally listening right now, and I'm like, I'm just riveted. And I'm like, oh right, right, right. I'm the host. Hold on, I'm just listening. <laughs> What's the questions? What's the questions? <laughs> questions. Yeah. Uh, where's your podcast? Um, hold on. And yeah, where's the cooking show? Where's the cooking book? I literally just looked up, and and I. I I know this is probably wouldn't be your title, but I saw most perfect view as you were talking about. It. I was like, oh, the most perfect cook or most <gasps> perfect cooking or yes! most perfect. Oh. And who knows? Maybe it's children, maybe it's kids oriented too, where it's yes. like, you know, it's anyway. a chapter dedicated to like cooking kids. with your kids. Cooking with your kids or something. Okay. I don't know, Jasmine. Also, your art, like, also your, like, I'm just so follow up visit okay. soon. Okay. Yes. I'm hear how artist retreat goes. Also, I'm going to have, I'm so curious as you talking about marriage too. And like I, and you and Dulé, I just, it, I, as I admire you as a mother, I admire you. I look up to you as a couple and a real beautiful, loving and real married couple. I wouldn't, I would love to have, I'm obviously going to have you both on as well. Cause I want to talk about what that looks like, what your either couple's time or me time. Or our me time looks like is having sex before Levi wakes up. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I don't Save think you an hour. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true sign. Is that why you set your alarm for a half hour before <laughs> like you get he's waking up at seven? <laughs> <laughs> um, I love it. I don't know that we can end on a much better note than that. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my I God. love you so much. Oh, Jasmine, I love you Too so much. much. I lost Prettiest my Prettiest girl in the world. Day. I almost jumped out of a moving car yep. to come give you a hug. I was yep. so... Also, like, and we'll save this, but I'm coming over. I just moved. I'm, I'm not even going to unpack, but come over. I'm coming over this week, next week, sometime. I, just, I am home. It. You're oh like, I'm, I'm, yeah. Somebody pressure her into coming over if anybody's listening. Yeah. You're like, did you go to Jasmine's <laughs> back? I got to leave my house. I got to leave the house. Yes, she has to leave your house. Yes. And she's going to bring me a piece of art. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> You're so <laughs> Did you see? That's Did yours. You see? That's literally yours. And it was like, I was like, oh, this is old. And, she, and you were like, <clears throat> oh, come on. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Okay. Maggie is a Coming beautiful over. artist, oh everyone. A beautiful artist. And three okay. years ago, I okay. seen a piece of art and I was like, I want this. And then she painted one and she has showed it to me. And she was like, I need to find the right frame. I said, I'll frame it myself. No, Give it's me the, art. the frame's a part of it. The frame's a part of it. And but that's what she can. said. Yeah, right, she's gonna go find a frame. It. <laughs> no, no, I have the frame. I have. The okay, frame. you do. I have okay. the frame. I just All moved, right. and I and I, it's sitting. I have it's, it. Okay, guys, she's gonna come over, and she's gonna eat. I'm and bringing the art. art. Oh my god, yay! It's ready. Like I literally have can come like tomorrow. I can't wait. But I'll okay, I'm tomorrow. texting. All right, Jasmine Simon, I love you. I love you too much. Prettiest girl in the world, everybody. Oh, not, I mean, this is my, I got it. I got my, this is This my, is our picket looks. Right this here. Is our, yes. <laughs> this is, I came, I came back and I was like, oh, I was all sweaty. And you know, when you come into like the AC after you're sweating right. and you're cold. Yes. So that's why I put my sweatshirt on. But yeah, we and had that's our, why we get along because I'm always cold too. You are always cold. I'm always know. cold. I'm like, um, yeah. so yes, you know what? This is our strike look. It's our strike look. All right. Um, anything else? I always leave a little room if you want to say anything else, but honestly, Jasmine, I want to have you back in like a minute because I want to hear in five minutes. I'm going to eat my cake, drink some okay, tea, and then I'll be back. Cake. Okay, great. And we'll get I that. You. You're going to have a little me time eating some cake and tea. I am. Um, no one's okay. here. We're I love you too. Oh my God. All right. Really? Don't tell anybody we're done. Okay. It's a secret. You guys, we're experiencing Jasmine's me time for the very this first time. Is, okay. This okay, is bye. it guys. Okay. Okay. Bye. bye. bye.